Are you aware of the effects of Marfan syndrome? No, I'm not. No idea. No. 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 No, don't know what it is. No. No. No, no don't know what it is. What syndrome? No. No, I don't know what that is. Well, Marfan syndrome is an inherited disorder of connective tissue, the tissue that holds us together. Um, it's passed down directly from parent to child in most cases, but in 25% of cases, the patient is the first one affected in the family. It affects the eyes, the heart, and the skeleton. So signs that we look for are tall, slim body build, uh, long fingers, protruding chest, loose joints, and 70% of patients have scoliosis. Of some degree, uh, some children have, have it severely and require surgery to straighten the back using metal rods. As far as the eye is concerned, the main problem is dislocated lenses uh, or detached retina. But it's the heart that we're really concerned about because that's the life-threatening problem and the aortic wall is too stretchy and weak and it can tear. This can be corrected as long as we know that it's growing or ballooning using an echo picture, an ultrasound picture of the heart. So we encourage every patient to come once a year for uh, an ultrasound picture of the heart. Um, the surgery is usually performed when the aorta measures 4.5 to 4.8 centimeters and it's quite safe in experienced hands. What kind of specific work do you do on the aorta for Marfan syndrome? There are different operations uh, that we perform on the aorta in patients with uh, Marfan disease. Generally, these patients have aneurysm of the aorta and more confined to an area where we call it the root of the aorta. The root is the base of the aorta where it actually starts. It can also affect other parts of the aorta. In patients with aneurysms, sometimes we can get rid of the aneurysm but what we call preserve the aortic valve. So the patient will continue having their own valve for, I would say, a good many years and hopefully indefinitely. Just now, our mortality rate for elective surgery in these patients, by elective, I mean patients who come in from home for surgery or urgent. Patients who may have had some problems, but they come to the hospital and their operation can be done sometime about 24 hours of their admission to a few days. So they don't need an emergency operation. For these patients, which constitute the very majority of our patients, the risk of mortality uh, is less than 1% in all the operations we've done. So the success is 99%. And our overall rate of complication, again, is less than 1%. And we aim that our patients go home about six days after surgery. What uh, medical research is being done into Marfan syndrome? At the moment we are doing is focusing on to the genotype-phenotype association where we have to see where a mutation is linked to a specific clinical features. So uh, how is the Marfan Trust helping then? Well, Marfan Trust actually is helping a lot because uh, we obviously do research that we're supposed to be doing and at the same time we're training uh, medical students and uh, BSc students. In this case, we have in this year two industrial placement students that without our help, they will not be doing this. We don't have any funding for them, but they're getting the skills that eventually they will move forward on their career and they will keep with them the Marfan syndrome experience. But what is the Marfan Trust charity doing to help? Um, so currently we have our research lab, the Sonali lab, uh, where we do a variety of research into uh, Marfan syndrome. Currently, at the moment, we're doing the AIMS trial, which is due to end in 2018, and that's where we've selected a number of participants to take part in a trial to test out a new drug, which could potentially stop the aorta around the heart dilating. Um, yes, we also raise awareness and educate um, people on Marfan syndrome so that's why we do our newsletters and we have our own website and leaflets where we can update people and inform people about the syndrome and yeah and we currently as well sorry educate people on the disease so anyone who has Marfan or anyone who has a family friend um, a, yeah family or a friend affected by it we 
give them as much information as possible. So when did you first find out that you were diagnosed with Marfan syndrome? Well, I first found out when I was like born, but I didn't really, well, I didn't really know I had it. So I think it was about nine, and then that's when I like started to understand what like the juice that like were evolved around it. But I didn't really like react in a bad way. I just kind of thought, yeah, it's it's life now. But I wasn't really like concerned for myself because I've got two younger brothers which both have it. I was more concerned that like they were like safe and okay with it than me. But yeah.